Hi, <laughs> I'm Lane K. Christian, and we're here to talk about The Horn is Born, who was written by Bill Borders, who's joining us today, and illustrated by Melissa Chernoff, who is also join us, joining us today. And we're just going to talk a little bit about how the book was made, um, how Bill wrote it, how I was involved as an editor and a um, uh, <laughs> art director, and how Melissa was involved as an illustrator. Um, when he first uh, brought the story to me, it wasn't called A Horn is Born. It was called Shoehorn Can't Toot, <laughs> which was, it was a catchy title, uh, caught my eye and ear. Uh, but as he worked on it later on, he came up with A Horn is Born, which is a fantastic title. Um, so the first draft that I had was way back in April, 2018. And I thought it might be fun if I give a real quick read of what the original story was, and then after Bill worked on it, what it became. So we started out in the olden days with shoehorn for a shoehorn was really quite grand, grassy and slender with his own special stand. His handle was jade with traces of gold, worn smooth through the years because he was old. His only real job was sort of a cinch, slide, slide feet into shoes without any pinch. As shiny and showy as Shoehorn sure was, he dreamed that one day he'd cause a big buzz. He lived all alone in a big backstage room where musicians would come to dress and to groom. And they carried cases that carried their prizes, gleaming great horns of all shapes and sizes, pampered and perched in these velvety cases they teased old shoehorn on a regular basis. So as you can see, the story was good. Wow, I, I forgot know. about that. That's... Did you forget about it? Yeah. <laughs> it's so and wonderful it hearing. Even heard it. Yeah. yeah, it's so wonderful so, hearing how it first started out. I yeah. didn't, I've never heard that version, so that's exciting. So it was great. You know, it was a good story, a story grabber, a attention grabber right from the beginning. But, um, when I had the manuscript, I scanned it for meter and I found that the meter was kind of inconsistent. So I talked to Bill and uh, as we often do, I suggested, well, maybe you want to write the story in prose. And Bill, what did you tell me? I said, I would love to, but I don't really want to end up in prose because it is music, musically themed. The whole book is about music and it just felt like the rhythm of, pro of verse was appropriate. Yeah. yeah. And I agreed. How could I argue with that? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so he, I think you worked a little bit on your own first before you went to Kim. Yes. Yeah. Quite a bit. We, so he, he worked, to, you know, because I gave him what I could see as far as the scanning and stuff in, and he worked on it and worked on it and worked on it. And then to get it polished in the end, you went to Kim, uh, Kim Norman. Norman. Right? Yeah. And who's a, I call her a, author. a meter maid. A meter maid, yeah. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> she was uh, she was great. I mean, about right down to the you know every foot and every beat. <laughs> yeah, she was. She was very good. So now instead of shoehorn or shoehorn, who's really really quite grand, grassy and slender with his own stand, we have in spite of this age, old shoehorn was grand, handmade out of grass with his own stand. And then I'll move on just to the story. His handle was jade and carved with a face that he wore uh, that wore a faint smile of wisdom and grace. And I don't know if you can see the illustrations with my lighting, but Melissa is going to share some illustrations later. Yes. But see, again, we've got that flow and that musicality there. His only real job was sort of a snooze, just slide stocking feet inside of their shoes, but shiny and bright as shoehorn sure was. He felt rather dull, and here's because Mary is sliding feet into shoes. He lived all alone backstage in a room, the place where musicians, uh, for musicians to dress and to groom. They change from their street clothes to tuxes and gowns, then go out and conjure up beautiful sounds. When they returned awfully pleased with themselves, they put all their instruments back on the shelves. And from these high perches in velvety cases, the horns would tease shoehorn with sour note faces. 
And I'm gonna stop there other than just real quick to show who those bullies are. <laughs> and Melissa's gonna talk later about how she gave them some slight human qualities without taking away what they really are, which is instruments. And Bill, when you get, if there's time, I think it'd be kind of fun if you tell what the teasing was, because I think the words are so fun on that. Do you have your book handy when, when the time comes? Yeah, sure. I happen to have one here. All right. Um, so just very quickly, the rest of the history, because we need to move on to the experts here, Bill and Melissa. Um, once everything got, um, I call it the team, the final team version where, you know, Bill and I worked together, then Kim came in. Um, we went back and forth, back and forth. And finally, by October 28th, so from April uh, 2018 to October 2018, do your records agree with mine, Bill? Pretty close. Yeah. Okay, what, do you, what do you have? October 27th. Oh, he's got the actual date. <laughs> Um, then we, a few weeks later, we signed an illustrator. Um, that did not go well. Um, the illustrator didn't seem to take well to um, direction for lack of words. And I don't know, Melissa will probably tell you later, I don't think I'm really, you know, I don't beat anybody up or anything like that. I'm, I'm a pretty nice director. <laughs> art director. Um, he didn't take kindly to it. So uh, by January, the end of January, we were signing a dissolution of contract on that illustrator. So I gave Bill um, a PowerPoint of seven different choices. And he fell in love with Melissa and I fell in love with Melissa. Yeah, so, and I, I would let me just jump in just quickly and say how pleased I and happy I was that I was able to be involved in that process because I have since learned that's not always the case with many publishers. And um, it was really cool to be to be able to have a voice in the selection process. And I went through because I've been in advertising, I've looked at a lot of portfolios for illustrators, and I go through a little thing and I judge them on a scale of one to five. And in, in that case, one person got 5.0, and, and it was, yeah, it was Melissa, so. It was... And, and now we see it as a blessing in disguise, right, Bill? Right, yeah. exactly. I, it well, certainly was a blessing for me. <laughs> didn't seem like it at the time. It was really frustrating to lose uh, the person and, and the time that we uh, had put into it, and, uh, but yeah. yeah. With and, hindsight, and it's all fine. And this is true because it ended up being a very long process. Usually with Blue Well Press, I forgot to mention Blue Well Press, usually we um, take a year to a year and a half. And we went from April until April 2018 until November of 2020. So it was a long process. And I appreciate you being so patient, Bill. A little bit like shoehorn. <laughs> I hung in there. So enough about me gabbing. Um, Bill, would you like to jump in and kind of give your... I was just going to, I thought one little thing that was interesting is this, the genesis of shoehorn itself and how it came to be, uh, how mm -hmm. I came up with it. Um, so I was in advertising for years and um, my my father, when he passed away, he, he left me a bunch of stuff. And one of the things he left me was this old shoehorn um, that actually has like a back scratcher hand at the top. And then it's a shoehorn, it's probably... 18 inches long or so. And anyway, that hung in my closet for years. And I, you know, I would use it occasionally if I had a presentation or somewhere I needed to wear fancy shoes that were kind of tight. But then I, when I got out of advertising and got into children's literature, um, you know, it's like, like you, I grew new antennas because I'd start looking for ideas. You know, you they come at you and you have to be attuned to when they cross your path. And um, uh, it was one morning, you know, I saw this shoehorn hanging there. It's been there for years. And I, it, I, uh, I thought, wow, why, why is it even called a horn? What is it? Uh, and what would, what would real horns think of a shoehorn if they should cross paths, you know? And, um, and that's, that's the genesis of the idea. That what, in what, what way could they cross paths? How could a shoehorn and real horns come in contact with each other? And that got me to the dressing room of a band, the backstage dressing room and stuff. And that's, so anyway, that's, 
that's how the idea started. I've since learned that shoe horns are called shoe horns because they were made out of horn. Early ones, long ago, were made out of animal horns. And um, that's that's a little background on that. But anyway, that's how shoe horn and, and the real horns crossed paths. That's a fascinating fact. Um, I meant to bring my other shoe horn in here, but if oh, there's there's a good kids one. watching, this is a shoe horn. <laughs> and this is a shoe horn Bill had made up just for uh, kids and, and people, fans of his book. And yeah. it says, Shoehorn says, always hang in there. And this one hangs just like Shoehorn did. Um, okay, Bill, do you want to do some bullying here with the horns? Sure. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So as you mentioned, this is where they first start ditch, ditching on, on, uh, on Shoehorn. And the, the French horn says, Hey, where are your vowels? Lay French horn was snide. Trombone bellowed out, dude, you ain't got no slide. <laughs> I can play loudly or purr with a mute, but heavens, blared trumpet, you can't even toot. <laughs> and worst thing of all, the flute gave a flout. No keys and no holes for the sound to come out. And how did Chewhorn react? Well, shoehorn, funny you should ask. <laughs> shoehorn hung in there and took it in stride. No way would these blowhards put dents in his pride. So what if they figured old shoehorn's a fake? He always knew someday he'd get his big break. And then we have a disaster. Yeah. <laughs> um, Bill... I think one of the reasons you wanted to, um, you and Melissa and even me, wanted to do this video is because it's um, music month. Do I have yeah. that right? Music in our schools month, March is. Yeah. Okay. And and this obviously this whole book is all about music and um, uh, get ahead of ourselves a little bit. One of the we sent it out for reviews and happily luckily it got all five star reviews from everybody okay, and the so one that that resonates really timely is this one from a uh, reader's favorite um jack magnus and he said among other things i can't think of a better way to introduce a young reader to the magic of music and uh that you know that kind of sums up really for us, for me, why why we're doing this video? It's just the perfect book for kids, young kids, to get to know music with a hopefully in a fun way. Okay, I agree, and I think it's you know just a good starting point. But it also, in addition to the music, it does touch on that bullying, which I think is right. important as well. Yeah, and I just kind of wanted to give the viewers a, a little understanding of why we're sitting around here uh, <laughs> doing what we're doing. Yeah. So. Um, I think that we're ready to talk with Melissa for a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So Melissa, tell us your story related to the book. Oh, well, let's see. Uh, I remember looking at an email uh, from you initially. You contacted me through email and uh, I, I think we had a phone conversation about the book after, after I read your email and responded. And I, uh, that conversation sort of was a little bit about my illustration sensibility. I received the manuscript after that. And then the conversation we had about the manuscript is the one that really excited me because we were both on the same page about how the look of the book should be. The book is, is it's whimsical, it's, it's unusual. And we really wanted a unique and interesting look for it. And so we sort of agreed on what that would be and and then I started moving forward uh, with with preliminary sketches and and some uh, storyboarding for the book, and that's how things sort of began. It was very I wouldn't call it a fast process, but we really connected immediately, and we were on the same page immediately. And yeah. and yes, about your your editorial guidance, it's pretty easy. <laughs> like, I felt like maybe it was because we shared the same sensibility, but I found your guidance inval invaluable as I was going through this book. I could, 
I could come to you with anything and you would say, well, this is what I think, but what, you know, what, what are your thoughts? And we just go back and forth about things. And that was really helpful to me. Um, I can every once in a while, we'd send something to Bill and he'd, he'd pipe in too. Yes, yes. You yep. know, I think Bill and I both wanted, um, and I think Bill was on the same page with you as well. And I think we both, yes. some of the things that we wanted were um, your ability to provide interesting perspectives oh. um, and movement and flow. And yeah. you accomplished all of that. So Yeah. And the, the one thing that I'd love about <laughs> Melissa and a few other illustrators, but it's in children's literature, it's not real common, but it, it's, it's, it's hard to define, but it's cute and sweet without being saccharine. It's yes. got a little edge to it. You know? It doesn't have an edge. It's not Thank you. Sweet. I remember you saying that it had an edge. And I really, I love that assessment. You know, yeah. like, so that's yeah, what, like my, that's... Maestro, he's, I love Maestro. <laughs> <laughs> he's one of my favorites as well. Um, <laughs> Did you want to sh share some of your yeah, art? I'd love, I'd love to share some of the images. Let me let yep. me share my screen with you. And I'll share the host. together. Bill, later on, do you still, when we're done, do you still have some other um, reviews that you wanted to talk about a little bit? Well, I've got several, but it's okay. I, I don't think we need to belabor them. All five stars. Love that. <laughs> I'm saying later if there's time, you know, if you'd like to. I didn't mean to bring that up too early so you couldn't do it, but um, no, that might fine. be how we wrap it up if we have time. All right. All right. So I'll, I'll go ahead and share my screen. And so this is the first image. I just wanted to begin with just this happy image of all these wonderful instruments and also our amazing shoehorn. And as we go through the, pro this is sort of at the end of the process, but I kind of wanted to show this sort of fun scene with uh, Shoehorn and all of his, you know, finally being able to be part of the band. Yeah. Uh, so at the beginning, it was more like this, just kind of trying to figure out what Shoehorn, you can see that at some point he was, he had a little mustache. <laughs> and, um, I was just trying to figure out what he should look like. Um, what what he was giving off, what was his his sort of vibe. Mm -hmm. um, and then I sent these to you and then we kind of talked about it and then I moved forward with this, the, the image on the right. These are some of the preliminary sketches for the instruments. And um, I have to say they were very, it was very exciting trying to figure out how to sort of anthropomorphize these characters without having them lose the, the the shape and the beauty. I mean, especially French horn, because he's so complicated and much more complicated than this. I've sort of pared him down, but giving him not just facial features, but attitude, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I wanted them to like have a little, you know, and you can see that um, there's a frown going on here and, you know, just uh, various facial expressions that bring them to, you know, sort of to life. Mm -hmm. These are some of the initial drawings uh, once we were on our way, this, uh, this is one of the drawings that, that you see in the book as a fully realized painting. And this is it with color. And uh, you can see that's, that here we are here with flute also. And let's see, this is that same image with color. And... It's great. So again, here are some of the preliminary images. You can see they look really sketchy. You don't know what's going to, you know, it's sort of, you get an impression of what might be happening, but you really sort of had to have faith that I would pull it, pull it off at this point. Um, and then this is the image that's actually in the book. Now, let's see. And this is one that you that you uh, shared with us earlier, Elaine. And you can see this scrolling is here and you can see all the musical notes. I wanted to make these shapes really rhythmic because of Bill's writing. Bill's writing had this sort of joyful and wonderful rhythm to it that I think called for the for a lot of movement. And yeah. Um, yeah. so that, you know, that sort of- It was so exciting to see these things, but after months to start seeing these things come in yeah. and, and oh, see, yeah. see type on it. And it's just wow, it's so cool. Very exciting. That was very exciting for me as well to see to see it with a with the text. 
And here's another one, um, just really, you know, following the musical notes through uh, the page and, you know, making you want to sort of move it as well. It's almost like you have to, when you look at the instruments, it's almost like you have to search to find the human, human qualities in them. Yes. You know, yeah. you have to look for their mouth, their eyes, their nose. Yes. I mean, they look so much like real instruments, but yet they had that personality. I really wanted there to be a slight sort of almost leaning in to get that they are sort of alive. Um, and also just doing the studies for each instrument, you know, uh, trying to understand the shape and the sheen for each of these instruments. Um, there was a lot of research that went into not only figuring out how they looked, but how to transform them a little bit. Yeah. I wanted them to be expressive, but yeah, I, I, it's wonderful when somebody gets that surprise. Um, but yeah, definitely. It, just creating the instruments, it was a, you don't want to take away from what they are because the book is so much about music. You need, you need that to be the first thing people are identifying with, that this is a musical instrument. Um, but then, you know, seeing its personality and sort of its gesture, I think is secondary, you know, because you have Bill's wonderful text sort of guiding you, you get a sense of what they're doing. Um, but primarily, I, I wanted you to focus on the fact that they are instruments, but they're sort of expressive instruments. Um, you did a great job. Thank there you. he is. And here is Maestro. <laughs> he is my probably my favorite character. I don't know if I should say that out loud, but he just his whole body feels like um, a, a musical instrument to me. He's just moving, and his shape and his gesture is so expressive, and uh, I just love that. Um, and here he is again, uh, you know, sort of at his first. Um, meeting with shoehorn great uh here is here are some preliminary sketches of uh the piccolo player and I, again just such a great character and elaine i think your note to me was that you wanted him to be like this round sort of you know very robust character because he's playing such a tiny little instrument that it would be very funny um yeah, yeah, that was something. I, that admit, was... I think that might have came from Tim Norman or Bill, but oh, yeah. really? Yeah, I don't remember which one, but yeah. but right. I liked it too. I liked that juxtaposition. Yeah, I think it was Kim. At one point, it was just I, I think I had it as a tuba player, you know, a big, and and uh, I think she or you, it must have been Kim, suggested, well, maybe it should be a big guy with a little instrument. And that is the contrast was funnier. <laughs> and I think for the rhyme, you might have had to change it to pick a little yeah, because tuba right. didn't work. If I right. remember, so. okay. I mean, you're. But I do what? love him, and and maybe when we're done, if there's time, Bill, you can you can read the page about why the piccolo player is so important. And then I also thought maybe the one where the ear and the foot is, you can read that one because mm -hmm. it's kind of an interesting yep. drawing. And it's kind of hard to know what that's about. Yeah. Sorry, Melissa. Melissa, go ahead. No, no, please. <laughs> Um, let's see. Let's see where we're. So here is, and oh, I don't know if you want to talk about it because he's up right now. But um, yeah, go ahead. You can tell us what happened. Yeah. <laughs> I'll read it. Oh, okay. The piccolo player had jumped to his feet at the sound of a crack when his rump hit the seat. The others all turned. And right there in his hand was broken baton, the head of the band. So the piccolo player is the culprit who sat down and <laughs> broke the baton. This is, this is I, I wanted to show this mainly because you could see a color version of that black and white sketch. But yes, yeah. you can see this is the moment that things change <laughs> in our story. Yeah. Um, let's see. And let's see if I... I think I have one more thing I wanted to share with everyone, which was we have an activity kit for Shoehorn that is available on the Horn is Born website. Yeah, um, hornisborn.com. So, so that has, let me see if I can um, find that in my files because I wanted to share it with everyone. Um, 
And here it is. And in that activity kit, there are several, uh, some art-based activities, but some, um, and I'll just, actually, I'll just leave you with the cover because I want you to maybe take a moment and go check it out. This is sort of a huge um, image, but uh, it has some music-based activities. It has a few um, just fun word searches. Um, and it also has like a puppet making activity where you can make shoehorn. And um, as I said, it can be found on the Horn is Born website. So that's the, those are all the images I wanted to share. Right. Thank you. That was really nice. I appreciate that, Melissa. Um, yeah. And Bill, that's a hornisborn.com. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Yep. It's that simple. We'll repeat it one more time. And uh, um, all right. Now I've, I've lost my train. Oh, <laughs> I wanted you to read uh, the ear. Yeah. Um, I really want to read the whole book. But <laughs> <laughs> we're giving teasers. I know. It's not like we're, we're reading the whole book. <laughs> this is a, a great illustration. This one it's probably my favorite favorite one. Is that and it's kind of where it explains what's going on. Now here comes a secret that every foot knows. Your ears can feel music right down to your toes. The rhythm and tempo tapped out in a shoe will stick to its shoehorn like musical glue. So Shoehorn felt certain if he got the chance that he could help Maestro and make his arms dance. The Maestro gripped Shoehorn just like a baton, then waved him and shouted, the show will go on. But, will it? but did it? <laughs> I'm <gonna> stop there. <laughs> Okay, well, I think we're just about ready to wind up, but I want to double check, Bill, yeah. first of all, being the author, is there anything you'd like to add? No, I, uh, I think we've covered everything. It is, the, that website is worth going to, uh, it's a, a hornisborn.com, and there's a little trailer on there that we made about the, the book, and there's, um, you can read up to a certain point about the book, and then the, the activity kit is there now at the bottom also, and then... Okay. I was going to show one little thing that I thought was kind of funny. Um, after this all happened, I was at my in-law's house and my father-in-law says, I got something for you. And he went and he dug through the, his closet and he had, this is probably 50 years old or so, but it's, oh, wow. it's remarkably similar. It has this strange, I don't know if you can see it, uh -huh. bizarre jockey like uh, head, but this, this is so this is a shoehorn that, oh that, that's wonderful it's amazing it's uh, yeah anyway the back of the book has a little back matter about shoehorns and the history of them and how they were made and and uh, it's surprising what a strange little object it's uh funny at finally getting some it's due yeah yeah and you know kids today i don't know how much they know what shoe warrants are about. And I think it's kind of kind of fun to teach them. Right. Um, I'll tell you, you don't always use them. We use our fingers a lot <laughs> more than <laughs> shoe horns. But I had surgery where I could not reach my feet and I had to use a long shoe horn. So there mm -hmm. are applications for that. So, yep. but uh, I just love how you created, you mix the two. You have a shoe horn and then you have the horns and how shoehorn like like melissa said mm -hmm. in the end he got to be part of the band right that which is it. so wonderful well thank you everyone that bill and melissa it was so fun speaking with you and, right. and going down memory lane i'm thank so you. glad the book finally came out i think it's a great book that uh, should be in every library of course <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you music really, to you my ears. That's music and to my ears. The combination of your work together is perfection. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Elaine. Thank you for making it happen. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you both. This has been such a wonderful experience. It really has. Be yeah. part of it. So, it's a horn is born. Unless, Bill, you want to read one more, one of your favorite passages, or are we good? We're good. Okay. <laughs> Make people go look for it. Yep. Thehornisborn.com. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.